Hi, I'm Sandy and this is Dawn the Prawn. And together we've created Sandy, Sandy Prawn, Prawn Productions. Productions. Well, here we are on the beautiful south coast of England with the Isle of Wight behind us. Sandy's my sister and we love spending time together um, crafting. We do all sorts of things from writing stories, uh, baking together, making little movies, playing music together. So we wondered if you'd like to join us on our forthcoming adventures. So see you soon. Hi everyone and thanks for joining us on our second Sandy Prawn production. Well, this week we are celebrating 100 years of Rupert the Bear. That's right, on the 8th of November 1920 he first appeared in a daily newspaper and he's been going strong ever since. Rupert the Bear was created by Mary Tortell who was a British artist and the stories were taken over by Alfred Bestall in 1935 who worked on Rupert right until his 90s. There's been a series of illustrators and writers since then, bringing him right up to date. Rupert Bear was um, a big part of our upbringing and every Christmas we would be given a Christmas annual, usually from Santa. Um, we would wake up in the half light and uh, see something at the bottom of the bed. Usually we would have hung our socks up the night before and see all different shapes and wonder what's hanging out the top of our socks. But on the floor there would always be um, a rectangular shape nicely wrapped from Santa and that would contain our Rupert annual which was always very exciting. And it was obvious Storm was always going to be the creative one so in the middle of the Rupert book there was something called magic painting and basically there were some pictures in black and white and you get a paintbrush with some water on it and you paint over it and it would suddenly burst into colour. So let me show you some of Dawn's early work. I'm not sure she'll forgive me for that, but anyway, nice work, Dawny. Over to you. Hi, everybody. Um, well, here we are celebrating Rupert's 100th birthday. And for me, it was probably where I got into paper crafting in those early days when we used to get these books as Christmas presents. I was always intrigued by the strange and fanciful origami shapes, the little projects that they included into these books. Some were most odd looking and like nothing I'd ever seen before, but I was really quite tempted to see if I could make these origami shapes. Of course, it wasn't called origami in those days, it was just paper folding. So um, what I've done in this book, I found one of those projects. So I'm going to have a go at making this bird. Now, this bird looks very much to me like the traditional Japanese crane, the bird type and not the sort that lifts up heavy objects. Uh, the, the crane has a slightly thinner uh, head and tail, but essentially I think it's the same one. Japanese believe that if you can create a thousand um, of those origami cranes, you can have a wish granted to you. This whole process is called Senbazuru. Um, and they reckon that takes about 50 hours for someone to complete that and have their wish granted. Anyway, let's have a go. Now we've persuaded mum to read a small extract from one of the Rupert books, so I'll pop that over the top of me creating the origami. Here it comes. Oh, daddy's busy, I can see. He has no time to talk to me. Hark, mummy. What's that rattling sound? asks Rupert, turning sharply round. He runs outside, then has a shock. That car looks like a real old crock. Just look what's standing in our lane, cries Rupert, dashing back again. That car's for us, his daddy says. I've hired it for the holidays. The quaint old car looks spick and span. It's in good order, says the man. Next day, they plan a picnic treat. Smiles mummy, yes, there's one spare seat. So Rupert sets off at a run to find a pal to share the fun.
Anyway, we can't celebrate Rupert's birthday without a cake, so this is what I was doing earlier. Which just leaves me to say, very happy 100th birthday Rupert from Sandy and Dawn the Prawn.